Okay, today's question is from Leonard. Leonard asked me, how do you get closer to God? So if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I have religious beliefs, but they certainly aren't typical beliefs. So when I saw this question, I thought, I've got a lot to say about the stuff you're talking about, Leonard. And I just wanted to explore that in today's little recording clip here, okay? So I'll read it through. I'm new to this. Even though my mother is super religious, I have not been introduced to religion. I've never believed in a God as per se, but I believe in a higher power who controlled everything in the world, who gave us a destiny, a path to follow, but it was in our hands to follow the path or mould it with our willpower and maybe conquer what we truly wanted to achieve. Whew, long sentence. Things have changed now. Little by little, the word and concept God and religion started to appear more in my day-to-day -day life. I started considering that these signs meant something and I shouldn't ignore them. But I asked myself, wouldn't it be unfaithful or disrespectful to God if I prayed to a higher power if I didn't even know what I believed in? Okay. I'm just going to read the whole thing. I'll, I'll explain what I think about this at the end, all right? I thought it was perhaps... I thought it was perhaps, but I wanted to start anyways. I started to try... I started just trying to talk to him by telling him how I felt about the situation and opening my doors of acceptance little by little. Okay, interesting. Now I'm praying every night at the same time and telling him my promises and how I appreciate his guidance and support each day. I still don't feel that connection despite accepting his existence. I know it's extremely, it's an extremely ignorant question, but what am I supposed to feel? Okay, so the biggest thing for me when it comes to religion and the concept of God and things like that is that I don't actually think of him as, you know, a big man in the sky above the clouds, right? That's how I used to think of him. When I was a child, I was raised in a Christian household. And so I used to think of like this guy sitting on a throne and he was like, you know, maybe some big man in a chair with like a crown on his head and that kind of stuff. And he would sit down like this. If I can draw an accurate depiction of what it was in my mind that I pictured God to be, right? I pictured a guy, like an actual, a person, right? Like a, a personification, if you will, right? But it was, it was like a person, right? This is what I imagined. And typically it's what Christians typically imagine. And I imagine this is what you're picturing, right? You're sending messages through prayer to this guy in the sky. And that is something that I changed as I grew up, right? My journey in this went from believing in this and then not believing in Christianity altogether and then conceptualizing God in a completely different way. So let me tell you about that. So God to me now is simply a a metaphor. So if I can control Z that, get that guy back in there. Okay, so this person is part of a story that the Bible tells, right? And so the characters are representations of something in reality. They aren't actually real themselves, right? So that's how I think about it. And that's not a conclusion I came to by myself, by the way. It's a conclusion that I kind of heard about from other people and I thought about it as a... I studied the Bible as a book, as a story, not as a factual document if that makes sense and that's not to offend anyone that's not to like uh you know say that religion is bad i think it's, it's great because of this reason right and so for me what that metaphor means is something that i will explain right now so if i can move this here i'm going to read to you some of my tweets that i've tweeted in the past about this topic okay so the first one why do people believe in god the treatment trial argument People tend to be better human beings when they believe that there is someone watching. So, when push comes to shove, imagine that you are being watched. Listen to. Even your thoughts read. It makes you a better person. Right? So this is the argument that why would you believe in this kind of person in the sky? Or why would you act as if that's the case? One of the reasons might be that if you do, and if you know that someone is watching, then you behave in a better way. Right. And I haven't come to define what God even means yet. Right. But I will define that soon in my second and third tweets. OK. 
why believe in God? The moral compass argument. Somehow, wherever we're from, whoever we are, we all have very similar concepts of what is right and wrong. Lying, cheating, stealing, typically we see these as things that are wrong. And truth, integrity, kindness, we see these as things that are right. Some people call this universal knowledge God, right? The knowledge of what is good and bad within our own hearts, right? So what is watching in that first tweet, what I'm referring to in the first tweet, perhaps it's our moral compass that some people call God, right? So whatever we do, that is a truth, isn't it? Is God always watching? Is our own moral compass always watching? Yes. Wherever we are, it knows everything that we know. And it knows our own concepts of what is right and wrong. And so it is as if God is watching all the time. Does that make sense? And so finally, in the third tweet, it kind of ties it all together. Why believe in God? The force for good argument. When we do something we know to be bad, we feel guilt. When we do something that we know to be good, we feel fulfilled. We are punished for bad and rewarded for good. Does that seem familiar? Heaven, hell, judgment, perhaps a metaphor, right? So we know in our hearts what the good thing to do is, and we are compelled to do that, right? We are, so if there was a a spectrum of like things that we, we could do from bad to good, and there was a spectrum there, we are compelled towards this direction of things. And so some people call that force, that force for good, Some people call that God. You have God within you. You have that spirit of doing good things and wanting to do good things. Or it could mean you have God within you as in you have that moral compass within you. God exists within everybody. That's what that means when people say that. This is how I interpret it. And another reason that God might be useful as a concept is that it is better you act as as a better person or you become you you manifest a better part of your personality when you believe that this god character is watching right and in reality the metaphor for me means that my own moral compass is watching and that in fact is truth right i am watching everything i'm doing and part of me is my moral compass my perception of okay is this is what i'm doing right now right or wrong that part of me is always there god is always within me god is always watching and god is always like there's a force inside me that compels me to do good things and that in itself is god as well right that's how i conceptualize god and that's how i can explain it in simple terms so i hope that explains everything and one more thing about what you've said here as well prayer okay let me just draw a little diagram about prayer right here so prayer for me all of these things are sort of i don't want to say they're not defined very well i want i want to say that they they can be vague in terms of the interpretation of it right so prayer typically means you know when someone is you know you, you can imagine someone kneeling down and having their hands together and praying like that, right? They're like, you know, sending some kind of message to a higher power like this. In my mind, what a prayer is, and they're more or less the same thing, is wishing well, showing thanks, things like this, right? So wishing well. So you might say, okay, I hope my grandma gets better soon, right? I hope my friend is able to, you know, get a job soon because he's unemployed and, you know, wishing well upon others, that is typically involved in a prayer, right? So for me, that is part of what praying is. If I write something down in my journal, if I think these kind of things, that's what prayer is to me, wishing well upon others and showing thanks. Those are the two things that I kind of think of when I think of, activities that I consider to be prayer, right? Showing thanks. I'm grateful for this food that I'm going to eat right now. 
I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for, you know, the weather today, right? It can be, you know, a small thing or a big thing or something that doesn't really matter or something that matters a lot. But showing thanks is also involved in prayer, right? So while I don't practice Christianity, I don't go to church, I don't pray in this kind of official way, I consider myself to be someone who has learnt a lot from the stories in the Bible and I use language like prayer, like God. And I I have some parts of these rituals within me in my daily activity. And it does, I genuinely believe it makes me a better person and it makes me enjoy life more, right? So that's what I mean when I mean when I say that I have a, a different interpretation of what I think about Christianity, about God. And that that's fine, right? So it makes me a better person. I think that's okay. Right? No matter, regardless of what your interpretation is, as long as it helps you, then that doesn't, that shouldn't make anyone else upset. Right? As long as it makes you a better person, and as long as, as, long as it serves you, then that shouldn't make anyone else upset. Right? You don't have to believe in something the same way that someone else believes in something. Right? We have a phrase in our church that I used to go to, and the phrase is like this. Make the truth your own. Your own. And that basically means have your own interpretation of what the truth is of what we teach in church. Have your own interpretation of it because that's the only way that you can connect with it. That's the only way that you can make it your own. Right? And whatever you believe, that is correct. Because there is only your interpretation your interpretation of it. Right? That's the only thing that matters. You can't just pretend to believe in something like someone else does. You've got to believe in it in your own way. And so that is like my final message I want to leave with you, right? My interpretation is simply that these things can be a metaphor. God, prayer, or an, an allegory for something that you do in life. So God can be a mental compass, it can be a force for good, it can be the force that looks out from your eyes and keeps you in check. Prayer can be wishing someone well and giving thanks. And so if you agree with what I'm saying, if you believe in things like the way I do, then by all means, adopt that. But if you don't, and you want to think about it in a different way, then do that, right? And so in that way, you can make the truth your own. So I hope that helps in your kind of exploration of what religion and God is to you. And so with that being said... Thanks for watching. It's a good question, by the way. I, I really like answering questions about religion. I don't know if it's super popular amongst, you know, viewers, but I love talking about it and I really appreciate when people ask me questions about it. So thank you for asking this question, Leonard. I've enjoyed answering it. I hope that helps. Take care of yourself. See you in a bit. Peace. See you in a bit.